There's this naturally occurring molecule in the body that has the ability to beat brain fog, eliminate inflammation, and keep disease at bay. That's exactly what nitric oxide can do, and so I traveled just north of Austin to go to Dr. Nathan Bryan's farm, who is the world's leading expert in nitric oxide. LSU School of Medicine, I was working on a PhD in molecular and cellular physiology, and that's the time the Nobel Prize had been awarded for the discovery of nitric oxide. And then Lou Ignaro, one of the gentlemen who shared the Nobel Prize, came to Shreveport, Louisiana, at the School of Medicine and gave a lecture. And I had a conversation with him as a young, naive student, but what he told me, I remember like it was yesterday. If somebody can figure out how to produce nitric oxide or safely and effectively deliver nitric oxide, it'll change the world. And so I go, well, that's a pretty big goal. And that's the approach we took. So nitric oxide is a gas, it's naturally produced in the body. The older we get, typically the less we make, and that's responsible for age-related disease, things like high blood pressure, diabetes, Alzheimer's. Really every poorly managed age-related chronic disease can be associated with a loss of nitric oxide production. So one of the main reasons why I was interested in nitric oxide in the first place is because a couple years back, I was suffering from a really bad bout of long COVID. And after doing some research and going down a bunch of different rabbit holes, I realized that nitric oxide was a powerful antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal, and all the antis that we want. And it was really helping people with long COVID. And specifically the modality that I was able to to accelerate that with was this breathing technique called the Bateco method, which I made another video about, and which I'll post up here and down in the description for you to watch later. And this breath technique is all about slow inhales, slow exhales through the nose. And by doing this, you increase the production of nitric oxide. Because the highest concentration of this enzyme called nitric oxide synthase is found in our airway epithelium. So when we breathe, there's mechanoreceptors. So these endothelial cells are kind of like these flags that stick out from our sinuses. Okay. So when we're deep breathing, there's these mechanoreceptors because it's opening up and it's kind of like, uh, you know, the villi in the gut that, yeah. that sweep through and they, they're mechanoactivators. So that turns the enzyme on to make nitric oxide. One of the main symptoms that I was experiencing as a result of the long COVID was debilitating brain fog. And this technique really helped with that a lot. I really wanted to understand some of the mechanisms of why this was, and also what are some of the other benefits that one could see when they increase nitric oxide production. So people get sick for two reasons and two reasons only. Number yeah. one, their body is missing something that it needs or it's exposed to something that it doesn't need. Now, if you look mechanistically at what causes that disease, whether it's from a nutrient deficiency or an exposure to toxin, there's always three finite responses. There's inflammation, oxidative stress, and immune dysfunction. You see that in every disease, whether it's heart disease, Alzheimer's, diabetes, autoimmune disease, neurological disease. And so it's nitric oxide that really acts as the master regulator of those. It inhibits inflammation, reduces oxidative stress, and mitigates the immune dysfunction. So if you can restore the production of nitric oxide, you can alleviate the onset and progression, or at least the initial symptoms of chronic disease. But what I say is nitric oxide is foundational. Your body cannot and will not heal without nitric oxide. So these are just a few of some of the many benefits you could experience by optimizing your nitric oxide production. With inflammation, think of nitric oxide as a helper in your body. And as a good helper, it stops too much of the swelling and keeps your body from getting hurt when you're not feeling well. And with blood pressure, nitric oxide helps keep your blood pressure healthy. So it makes your blood vessels bigger, and increases the flow of blood so that you can get more nutrients and more delivery to the cells in every part of your body. And from a performance perspective, nitric oxide helps with energy. As an example, it brings more oxygen and nutrients into your muscles so they don't get as tired as quickly, and it helps with faster healing so your muscles recover faster after playing or working out, and it helps your brain work better so you can even think faster. There are eight main things that me and Dr. Nathan Bryan talked about that slow down the production or stop the production of nitric oxide. The first thing that prevents natural production of nitric oxide is a sedentary lifestyle. The less we move, the less active we are, the worse our nitric oxide production will be. The next thing is stress, and stress affects our body in so many ways negatively if we don't know and understand how to manage it. And this includes our endogenous nitric oxide production. So maintaining healthy stress levels and having a good perspective on things and what's happening in the world is going to aid in having good nitric oxide production. The next thing is gonna be bad sleep. And if you wanna learn about how to optimize your sleep, I've spent a lot of time making content on this channel about that topic. So I'll put a playlist right up here and down in the description for you to go watch afterwards. The next thing is the SAD diet, also known as the standard American diet. So this is a diet that's high in processed food and refined carbohydrates and lots of sugar. Sugar is a toxin, it's a poison, it's an, a very addictive substance. And when you say sugar, you mean artificial sugar, you mean I mean cane? sugar. Things that are what's called high glycemic index, meaning yeah. when you eat these, you get a rapid increase in blood sugar, yeah. which is glucose. And then there's some lower glycemic 
index foods like sweet potatoes, for example, that you consume that and you don't get this spike in glucose. Yeah. So it's more of a subtle response. It's called glucose. It's a glue, right? It glues things together. Glucose sticks to hemoglobin. If glucose is stuck to it, it's glued in one state. It can't move. So it can't deliver oxygen and can't pick up CO2. That's why diabetics have such poor oxygenation and sugar also sticks to the enzyme that makes nitric oxide. And as I said, these enzymes have to undergo a conformational change to transfer these electrons to do their job. But if sugar stuck to it, it's locked down. It's completely dysfunctional. So we have to eliminate sugar and sugar containing foods, supplement, beverages. What's great about these next four are they're not things that you have to do necessarily, they're things that you have to not do. So I love this idea of getting results via negativa. So instead of trying to add more stuff to your plate, you can remove these things and that's gonna help in the natural production of this nitric oxide. And the first one is gonna be fluoride. And Dr. Nathan Bryan explained why this is such a big deal. First of all, if you go to the store and you buy rat poison, look at it. It's sodium fluoride. So fluoride is a poison. You know, there was some early data showing that fluoride could help in the remineralization of teeth and prevent caries. But this chronic exposure of now fluoride in our toothpaste, fluoride in our drinking water, fluoride in the water that we make our coffee, our tea, or cook our food in, fluoride in the water that we bathe in is leading to really bad things. 95% of Americans are deficient in iodine. So the last thing they need is exposure to fluoride. Now, what does that mean? Now your thyroid doesn't work because you need iodine to make your thyroid hormone. And fluoride's a neurotoxin, kills your thyroid, and it's an antiseptic. So if you're ready to get fluoride out of your life, you're gonna need three things. Number one, that's a water filter. Number two, that's a shower filter. And number three, you're gonna need the right type of toothpaste. So if you wanna find the best products in all of those categories, then we put together a free non-toxic database, which you can download. Just click the link down in the description or go to wellnessdaddy.com slash database and you can find exactly what you're looking for. You also went on to educate me about mouthwash. Two out of three Americans wake up every morning and kill all the bacteria in their mouth with antiseptic mouthwash. They do it every day for 20, 30, 40 years, their whole life. And they have high blood pressure, they have erectile dysfunction, they're sick and they wonder why and their doctor can't figure it out. And I know this sounds silly, but once you understand what it's actually doing to your oral microbiome, then you'll know why this is such a problem. In 2019, we published a study showing causation. So in this study, we took young, healthy people with good blood pressure and we just gave them mouthwash twice a day for seven days and we did daily tongue scrapings we monitored their blood pressure and what we found was seven days after we started the mouthwash their blood pressure went up we didn't change their diet they weren't on any medication we didn't change anything about it other than just eradicating the microbiome and we saw an increase in blood pressure and then what we found if we stopped the mouthwash for four days the blood pressure normalized and then the last two are anti-acids and statins both of these are negatively going to impact our body's ability to naturally produce nitric oxide which eventually can lead to much greater problems something i love about dr nathan bryan is he's living all the things that he talks about he's this cool combo of scientist meets cowboy and he took me all around his land showing me his house and his animals and his farm and the whole nine yards and he explained to me and showed me all the things that he does to stay as healthy as he can and ensure the health of his family as well but we'll get to that in just a minute so there are five main things that we can do to increase our natural production of nitric oxide so he explained to me how one of the most important things you can do is get 20 to 30 minutes of direct sunlight that nitric oxide is bound in a storage form so to release it from that storage form we need some energy and that energy comes in the form of infrared, infrared radiation, light. Okay. infrared light. Yeah. If you take nitric oxide and replete your nitric oxide and then do infrared light therapy, you have more nitric oxide to be released from that light energy and you're gonna get better effects from it. The next thing you can do is obviously the opposite of a sedentary lifestyle, which is having a very active lifestyle. And even if you don't have a lot of time, he made it explicit that there is a specific type of exercise that you can do that even if you don't have a lot of time is gonna make a huge difference. You know, 15, 20 years ago, we used to say 20 to 30 minutes of moderate physical exercise. But then people go, well, I don't have 20 or 30 minutes a day to exercise. And now there's data showing that if it's just two to three minutes of high intensity interval training and getting your heart rate up, getting your breath rate up and doing that two to three minutes through nasal breathing is enough to stimulate and activate nitric oxide production. And now there's no excuses. Another thing that you can do to increase nitric oxide that I already talked about is nasal breathing. So I tape my mouth when I go to sleep 
and I try to practice this buteco breathing or else at least be as mindful as I can throughout the day to make sure that I'm breathing through my nose. And if I can, I'll allocate some time to do that one type of technique and I will put the link for that in the description if you wanna try it for yourself. So you'll also see a pattern here. We took out the mouthwash, we took out the fluoride. That creates better oral health. Two important studies we did and we published this. One in 2014 where we showed that if we just did tongue scrapings and we just cultured the bacteria that lived on the tongues of just random people and we would do a full metagenomic analysis, we'd identify these bacteria. And what we found was the people who had the best blood pressure had the greatest diversity of the oral microbiome and that we could actually detect these specific nitrate reducing bacteria that would produce nitric oxide gas. In the people who were typically the most unhealthy and the highest blood pressure, they had the least diverse oral microbiome. So just taking care of your mouth and making sure you have really good oral health is one of the most important things you can do to have good nitric oxide production. And then obviously if you cannot eat the standard American diet and you can eat some type of healthy diet that is rich in whole foods, then that's gonna be optimal for your nitric oxide production as well. For the average American, reduce your carbs. We need protein, especially the older you get to prevent protein breakdown, muscle breakdown, bone breakdown. You have to have adequate protein. And then good healthy fats, no trans fats, none of these seed oils. You also share with me that most of the nitric oxide products on the market don't work. And he had this machine that could scientifically test how much nitric oxide was being released from different products. And I'll tell you this much, I definitely felt the difference when I took his tablets. He has these lozenges that you put in your mouth and it dissolves. And I felt sharp, I felt clear, and I was like, hey, I like this. This is a nice feeling. We just took the supplement before yeah. this. And you're, and I, you're I feel, young and healthy. Yeah, I feel my brain is like switched on. So if you wanna go check those out, I'll put a link in the description for you, but don't buy a supplement as a replacement of doing the behaviors. Do the behaviors and then the supplements are nice to have. And I asked him after 25 years, how is he still so motivated to pioneer and champion nitric oxide and get it out into the world? after he's already done this work for almost, you know, going on three decades. 2018, we were living out here. My oldest son was in um, college playing basketball at Schreiner University, at the, like a D3 or D2 school. And, you know, one weekend around Christmas, he, he came home, was partying with his friends, and, yeah. and he died in a car accident. Mm. So that was, again, one of these events that, <clears throat> for us, really put life in perspective and thinking, you know, our, our time here can be so short. For me, it was like, number one, how do we protect the kids and the family from something that was completely accidental? But more, it's how do we maximize the time we have and every day wake up, you know, with a purpose and look forward to something and just don't waste a single day and just making the most of each day because we're not promised tomorrow. And because of this, Dr. Nathan Bryan wakes up with a vigor each day, working relentlessly to push this message out into the world so that more people can understand the benefits of nitric oxide. And he's even gone as far as to start working on creating a drug that can be cleared by the FDA so doctors can start prescribing this medicine to patients so that they can get the benefits of nitric oxide in that clinical setting. And this is going to help and save millions of people's lives and health. After spending some time with Dr. Nathan Bryan, I realized something really profound about nitric oxide. There's no argument. Nitric oxide biochemistry and physiology is extremely complex and complicated. Clearly. <laughs> but the, the solutions to it are really pretty simple. But people have to buy into it. There is no substitute for self-discipline and responsibility. The science is very clear. Here's what you gotta do. Now it's up to the individual person to do it. Take some responsibility, have discipline, throw out the bad stuff, stop doing the things that disrupt it, start doing the things that promote it, and it'll change your life. Just this morning I woke up and this guy was thanking me sincerely from the bottom of his heart for saving his life because he heard one of my podcasts or YouTubes and goes, oh, well, I got rid of my fluoride. I'm gonna Stop using mouthwash. I'm gonna wean off the antacids. And within 30 days, for the first time in 50 years, his blood pressure is normal. And he's off his blood pressure medicines. It changed his life. He feels good. It's saving him money and it's making him healthier. It's nice to know that finally something in health can actually be easy and straightforward. And it just takes a little bit of awareness, which might I point out, you now have. All it takes is removing the things that are getting in the way and then just doing some simple behaviors that are the basics, really. And I think that can give us all some hope for being just a little bit healthier. I hope you like this video. And if you like this one, I know you're gonna like this one right here. So go ahead and watch that video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and be well.